everyone, uh, welcome to the channel. My name is Linda, and if this is your first time here, I'm so glad you found us. And uh, if you're back to watch more Lucifer with me, welcome back. Uh, so we are on episode, or season one, episode five this week. It's called Sweet Kicks. Uh, and someone was kind, in, uh, one of my patrons was kind enough to inform me that uh, pretty much all the episode titles are like lines that Lucifer says at some point or maybe one of the other characters but mostly Lucifer I guess that uh, he says them at some point during the episode and I have noticed that up until this point yes every single one uh, have been uh, Lucifer lines which is highly enjoyable so somewhere in there he's going to talk about sweet kicks which I'm not sure if he's talking about shoes <laughs> uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see um, but yeah, I'm very excited to get back into the show. I'm loving it a lot. Um, I've been told that there's a lot of like little, um, little moments that are layered in throughout the series and, um, that sort of foreshadow, I guess, or give hints about what might be coming or, you know, that certainly I imagine on a rewatch of the episode would make you go, oh, I see that now. I see what they did there. So that's, I love that, I love when shows do that. So I'm looking forward to um, finding all those little tidbits if I can. And uh, yeah, so let's get back into it. Season one, episode five, Sweet Kicks. Oh, come on, gorgeous. You tell me your most dangerous desire. Cheeseburger. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Attracts. Oh, yeah. People really do kill for Ben's shoes. We need... Uh, okay, I thought you had my back on this. If the department finds out what really happened, I could lose my badge. What, you mean the fact that you shot me on purpose? I want in. In? On the action. I got a taste of danger, and I want more. This case is the perfect method for me to explore my mortality in an exciting and dangerous way. I will never be appointed without the support of the minority communities. Right, yes. But well, I tell you what... If you allow me to assist on this case, and possibly others, I'll deliver you all the support you need. I believed that you actually might be the devil. I am the devil. Historically invincible. Until now, and that's what makes this case so exciting. Real danger. It's the perfect opportunity to see what other mortal qualities I have. Let me guess, you did him a favor. Lucifer helped me get my first show. It was a real inspiration. I try to reflect that in my art. Any idea who took a shot at you? Nope. 50,000 active gang members in L.A. Could take a while. Well, you're right. No time for a quick drink, then. <laughs> We're on duty. You are the oldest young person I've ever met. And coming from an immortal, <laughs> that's saying something. I'm not going to drink in a bar where everyone hates me. Did you ever consider they hate you for that very reason? Yeah, they hate me for several reasons. Mm. Come on the least you could do. Besides, you know, I need something to dull the pain. Oh, if I say yes, will you shut up about the leg? No promises. <laughs> Ooh. Oh! Hmm. Poor metal bitch. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Like, wow, you guys are amazing. Anthony Paolucci. He's partners with the guy who took a bullet in the Palmetto case, Malcolm Graham. Ah, yes, the infamous Palmetto. Malcolm got shot, meeting with some gangsters, and... Paolucci thinks he took the bullet like a hero. I think he was on the take. No, I don't know, I just... I was following my gut, I guess. Caught in the crosshairs of another man's crime. I don't need their sympathy, but thank you. Oh, no excuse for that man's rudeness. No, 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 I can handle Paolucci. I don't need you to stand up for me. Understood. <laughs> He's looking for danger. Hello. Yeah, what do you want? Well, firstly, let me state that I'm in no way standing up for my associate detective <gasps> Decker, but on behalf of myself and only myself, I think you're a complete sack of ass. <laughs> Yay! No, do it again, do it again. That's fantastic. And your name? Mazikeen. How do you spell that? Surprise me. What are you trying to throw me off balance? Because I'm much more comfortable. Oh, he's wearing something different. I think. <laughs> so I see. 
I want to go back. Give me something, Maze. Give me something that I can use against Lucifer, and I'll make sure you're both back where you belong. That's the problem. He doesn't confide in me anymore. There is someone he does talk to. A doctor. And I bet she would love that ridiculous suit. I want what's best for Lucifer. The same thing you want. Then tell me about this doctor. Does he want what's best for Lucifer? Mike. <laughs> Mike. Hmm. That's a very interesting situation with the two of them. I actually just moved into the office next door. I'm Dr. Kane. Oh. Since when did Hell's favorite torturer become my mother? You're changing. Becoming vulnerable. Maybe even mortal. Mm. <laughs> Things change, Lucifer. Yes, but you don't, Maze. You exist to protect me. To know where I am and who I'm with at all times. Whether you want to or not. Hmm. Thank God, this guy. Mm. Is it my thanks? You want her a kiss? I don't want your thanks. <laughs> because I don't do favors for guys like you. So it's a kiss. I did this for Chloe. Oh, it's about time she got some spark in her life. Spark? How about real danger? Do you have any idea how easy a gang vendetta can spiral out of control? Well, I'm trying my best to find out. Yeah. Chloe is the mother of my child, imbecile. You want to work this case? Take care of her. Sir, yes, sir. Okay, does she need to be taken care of, though? Or is she actually also a cop? I don't know. There's, like, something about that guy that drives me up the wall. He's very, like, grr, I am man. And he's very, like, territorial with her. That kind of drives me crazy. Did Lucifer just pop himself in there? My house, man. <laughs> How the hell did you get out of the car? Child's play. And good thing I did. There was immediate danger. He was about to leave this woman completely unsatisfied. <laughs> He's your partner? Yeah, don't get me started. <laughs> Cops are rats no matter what we do. And now they're breaking into our house? I should sue that pervert. From the you have my blessing, but... Did you attempt to use him as target practice the other night? That wasn't uh, us. Okay, well, witnesses said they heard you making threats at the door. No, nah, we, we just want to in. Paolo was Diego's cousin, okay? It's whack what happened to her. Why do you think he's so upset? If anyone have beef with Benny Choi, it's Yellow Viper. Yellow Viper. <laughs> Sounds like a venereal disease. Yeah, I have jail a few nights before Benny's show. He was a big deal graffiti artist, ran with Benny back in the day, then took the fall into B&E. Oh. Let me guess, anemic sex from Sadouche. No, from Benny. Someone else is dead. Definitely blood, though. But curiously, not human. Oh, they killed it. Oh, they killed his pig. Aww. His poor pig. This is the murder? Pig diddy. I'm sorry, I didn't know who else to call. Hector and I went to an opening. I came back to find him. Did. Were you aware that your old friend Yellow Viper was released from prison last week? I had no idea he was out. Yeah, Viper <laughs> must have snuck into my show. He fired those shots. Killing Pig Diddy was a message. All right. We'll get a squad car to watch your house tonight. Viper comes by, he'll be safe. Oh, y'all done. Uh oh. Uh oh. <gasps> There's kids there. Oh, boy. Viper and the perv. If you walk away now, no one has to get arrested, no one has to get hurt. Yeah, they do. Viper killed my cousin. I'm here to get justice. As you should. Oh, you insane. Shut up. Mm. This is where you do remember that bullets hurt, right? And furthermore, <laughs> you do seem to have this danger thing down, Pat, don't you? Yeah. I mean, the devil could learn a thing or two. The devil? The hell are you talking about? So answer me this. So... <laughs> Where'd he go? Oh, dear. Don't matter. I'll kill you first. It's a great idea. Oh, oh, what the heck? What the hell is happening? That's what I said. 
Oh, it's Maze. Maze is happening. Her bartender's a ninja? Of course she is. <laughs> oh, fires of tire. Oh, what a humorous crush. <laughs> oh, I love that man. Yikes. Ass saved. You're welcome. His ass, not yours. <laughs> and hey, it looks like, uh, got the bad guy. Yeah. Looks like. Mm -hmm. She's definitely not convinced. I'm also not 100% convinced. I think I just figured it out why you do these favors. Oh, really? Power makes you feel superior in control. It's like you have some kind of god complex. I most certainly do not. You do a favor for one person, someone else suffers. When you gave Benny that favor, you damned Viper to prison twice. Whether he's guilty or not. Hello. <laughs> You've already wasted so much of your life. What do you desire to do with the rest of your time on Earth? My arm? I swear I didn't shoot up Benny's show. If I hated him so much, why would I bother to go after him and miss? Yes, he's got a point, actually. I mean, to pop off in a crowd like that and not hit anyone, he'd have to be the worst shot in the world. Or the best. Okay. Yes, my favor really did pay off for you, didn't it, Benny? You're a huge star. <laughs> but if there's one thing the devil abhors, it's a fake. <laughs> you failed <laughs> to inform me that in getting you off the B&E charge, suspicion would immediately fall on your best friend. I had no control over that. Uh, didn't you? Oh, you man, I missed you, bro. Now I never came to visit me in prison. I wish I could have done more. Well, framing him for shooting up your fashion show surely didn't help. Viper was always the real talent. When you heard he was getting released, you tried to take down the competition before he could take down you. When Paola Cortez died, you had to improvise, didn't you? You knew pointing the fingers at Latin Kings would eventually get back to me. How so? Because you didn't pull the trigger. So many bullets fired into that crowd. How did no one get hit? That takes precision. I saw your marine tattoo when I met you, Hector. A heart and crosshairs, sniper unit. You know, firing a gun into a crowd is a felony. You're responsible for, good reason. for Paolo's murder. Unless, of course, you were just doing someone a favor. Benny made me do it. I'll testify, man. He told me he'd make me a partner. But then he made me plant the gun on Viper. He killed Pig Diddy. Oh. I love that pig, man. Oh. oh. You were never good as me, man. You were never good as me, man. Never. What? Do it. I think so, oh. Sonny Jim. No, I'm mine. Oh, he's going to do his face, isn't he? Hmm. I can't. Expert on LA Street. Maybe not. Oh, it was funny. <laughs> this piece seems a lot more authentic to me now. <laughs> I think I'll keep it. Yeah, God. Yikes, that was a cool transition, though. Didn't jump scare me as badly this time. I saw it coming. Phew. The mother of Paula Cortez is courting her minority votes. Going. Her daughter's killer is behind. Olivia got what she wanted, and I got what I wanted. Oh, don't say it. Come on, don't I'm say it. I'm now an official civilian consultant for the <laughs> LAPD. Yes, you may have a point about the dangers of becoming mortal. There are consequences. I need to be careful. Yes, you do. So after all, I almost got our pet detective killed. <laughs> I know that you'll always protect me. No matter how mortal I become, the devil can depend on that. Yes. You can. Uh. Uh oh. Uh. So I said, <laughs> they didn't jump scare me with his face. I was ready for it this time. I was good. I knew it was coming. So instead, they jump scared me with Maze's face. 
mazes like scaly freaky not nearly as ridiculously beautiful face so that was cool that's mm -hmm. they're mean okay so that was uh season one episode five of lucifer i really enjoyed that it was a great episode there's just so many um there's so many like underlying ideas and themes in the show like i love the idea that you know now that lucifer is experiencing some mortality or or worries that he's gonna you know dealing with mortality obviously he can be hurt um and so it's interesting that now that he's experiencing that suddenly he's wanting to like he's looking for danger and he's wanting to um like challenge that mortality almost he knows that technically things can hurt him but he feels he's like challenging that idea of it. it i just i find that interesting that instead of his mortality or the the fact that things can hurt him and he may possibly be able to die now instead of that scaring him and freaking him out it makes him want to you know seek out danger and and push it and see how far he can push it it's, it's just interesting um, I, fi I find that that idea interesting so yeah I, I really enjoyed this episode like I said I don't know I'm, ho I'm hoping at some point I, I don't know maybe it's just me with um, her ex I can I still I literally can't remember what to call him other than detective douche I know he has a real name um, and I'm sure that like I, I'm maybe I'm just overreacting to him I don't know I'm sure he probably just has Chloe's best interests at heart you know they're not together now but he probably he did say you know he's right she is the mother of his child so it makes sense that he's you know worries about her a little and wants her to stay safe and things but like she is still she's her she's a cop like she knows what she's doing but again having said that i get that people worry about people they care about so maybe he just still cares about her i don't know there's just something about his character that grates on me a little um but that may change with time too or maybe he'll get worse and i'll dislike him more i don't know but but I, I enjoy him as a character though because he creates you know he creates emotion and feeling and frustration which is that's that's not a bad thing it's it, it adds to the show so yeah i'm interesting i'm interested to see where things go with him uh i'm i'm also interested to know how chloe feels about him like because obviously he it seems anyway that he still cares a little at least a little bit um i mean he seemed really jealous of lucifer the other episode and then you know talking of going to lucifer to like get him to protect her and whatever i feel like he's he does still care about her so i'm interested how she feels about him like how and why did they break up was it all over the palmetto thing like did was that too awkward or too much for them or was that before it i'm just curious about their relationship and how that works um but yeah anyway that was a great episode again i uh, really enjoyed it and uh if you enjoyed uh the reaction and want to see full length and early reactions come on over to patreon the link is in the description below and uh, i hope to see you there Okay, thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.